Hi, welcome back to Big Word Bible Studies. I am Tanya Dennis, and we are almost done with the book of First Kings. I can't believe the season has gone so quickly. We are now in chapters 19 and 20 of First Kings. Now, if you're on the mailing list, you already have the homework. If you're not on the mailing list and you're only following through YouTube or the website, you didn't get the homework because... I didn't post it. I am. Um, life has been a little crazy. We actually went on vacation last week and, and I've gotten a new job and there are just a number of things that have complicated my schedule lately. And so the homework was truncated and so I didn't post it. It is up there now, even in its abbreviated form, it's up there. And so you can download it now and follow along that way um, and dive a little bit deeper into God's big word through these chapters. In our discussion last night, even though the homework covered chapters 19 and 20, we really only talked about chapter 19. The reason for that is that chapter 19 is extremely applicable to us today. God never changes. Human nature never changes. And this chapter reveals that very clearly, that we have mountaintop experiences and then we usually have a valley and God is consistent through it all. And James chapter 5 verse 17 it says Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Now often we look at Old Testament characters these heroes and heroines and and we elevate them up on these pedestals but when you really study the Old Testament when you really study their lives you see that they're just like us. David yes he had a heart after God however he still struggled with sin. Solomon was extremely wise and he pursued God as well. He built the greatest temple um, that has ever existed for God and yet he had his own flaws. Elijah was the same way. Yes, he had great faith and yes, he followed where God wanted him to go, but he was also a man just like you and me. So in chapter 19, we learn about that now. Let's back up a little bit. Back in chapter 18, we had the battle of the gods where the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah built their um, altar and they were going to offer a sacrifice and, and Elijah built his alt offer, altar. Oh my goodness, I cannot speak this morning. <laughs> Elijah built his altar and he was going to offer a sacrifice as well. Now, the challenge was, okay, you pray, I'll pray and whichever God comes down and consumes the offering, that is the one true living God. You remember this from chapter 18. Now, of course, the prophets of Baal failed um, because their God is not real. Our God, however, is real, came down, consumed this offering, licked up the water all around the trough around it, and all the people of Israel bowed down on their faces and proclaimed, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Now, that was definitely, if there's ever been a mountaintop experience, that was it. So Elijah thrilled, I'm sure, he had followed God's instructions thoroughly, and here he sat, the rain was starting to come, he's running back to the capital, and what's the first message that he gets? Jezebel's mad. Ahab, of course, ran back, told his wife, she gets a little upset, and tells Elijah, basically, he's going to be dead by sundown tomorrow, and she's coming after him. Now, Elijah even though he had just seen this miraculous, amazing exhibit of God's strength and power, he panicked. This makes me think a little bit of the, um, the Israelites as they were leaving Egypt. You know, they're in exile. They see God part the Red Sea. They get to walk through on dry land. And what's the next thing they say? Oh, we're going to die. We have no food. It would have been better if we had stayed in Egypt. This goes on for 40 years. We have the same thing where people see tremendous evidence that our God is God, and then all of a sudden we forget. Now, in chapter 19, as you read through this, you're going to see these are very clear signs that Elijah was depressed. He goes, he hides in a cave, he falls asleep, and you know, he, he just he sees no point to live. He wants to be wiped off the face of the planet because it's just he's the only one left, he's in isolation. Now, he was clearly depressed, and that is what typically happens when our expectations are not met. Now, God had given him very clear instructions. He followed those instructions. However, God didn't tell him what was going to happen next. Elijah must have imagined in his mind, well, they're all going to bow down, and the king and the queen, they're going to, you know, convert, and they're going to acknowledge that God is God, and, and I'm going to be, you know, the prophet who saved the nation, and the whole nation is going to turn back to our God, and we're going to be blessed again. 
that clearly didn't happen. And when our expectations are not met, we get depressed. We we get um, we get burnt out when we have human expectations of what we're trying to do, and then we don't have the strength to make them come about. And God doesn't, you know, come along and pull his weight like we think he ought to. That's when our emotional state and our physical states suffer. Elijah is weary, but what we see in the face of that is God's very gentle, nurturing care of him. So in um, verses four through verses four through eight of chapter nineteen, God sends a messenger to take care of Elijah, and he gives him food, and he gives him water, and he gives him nourishment, and he's able to rest, and he takes care of him. Um, last night we talked about this this wonderful characteristic of God, how whenever we are weary, he replenishes us. He offers whatever it is that we need to go on. Um, last night, uh, Amy, who is part of our in-home group, uh, referenced us back to Psalms chapter Psalms 3 and 4, and both of these are beautiful passages. If, if you have a moment, please take the time to read these. They're, they're just fantastic. So in 1 Kings chapter 19, um, it talks about how God gave him rest and God gave him food. In Psalm 3, it says, um, uh, Psalm chapter 3, verse 3, it says, But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me round about. Um, I love this psalm. It's it's just so beautiful. We, we can look all around us and see thousands and thousands of people who are against us. Now, Elijah only saw Jezebel, but we can see all of this that's against us. But the fact is that our God is still God. He's still God. And he will allow us to rest in the presence of our enemies. He will allow us to be replenished even though we are weary, even though we are out of strength. He will give us the strength that we need to proceed in the path that he has set before us. In chapter 4 of Psalm, it repeats these same these same themes of God is our shield. He is our protector. He is going to answer when we call. In verse 8, it says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. God never abandons us. He never leaves us to face all of these trials on our own. But sometimes we lose sight of that. Sometimes we lose sight of who he is and what exactly he has said. Now, that leads us into the next section. So we have Elijah's clearly depressed and he's very upset. And in the next section, uh, this is verses 9 through 18, um, God asks him a question. God takes him, or Elijah goes out to this cave and he's hiding in the cave. And um, Elijah asks him, not Elijah, God asks Elijah, what are you doing here? He asks him this twice, and Elijah's answer is consistently the same. It is um, that he has, you know, done all of these things, and he has been jealous for the Lord, and he has been, you know, proceeded in righteousness and exactly what God wanted him to do. God then comes, and you've got the earthquake and the fire and the wind, and, and then this little whisper. And God was not in all of these big dynamic Things. He was in the little whisper. Now, why was that? Well, we know that God can create all of these things, and God did create them here, and they and they came through, and they were showing Elijah his power, but they were also showing Elijah God's voice. God's voice came in the whisper, and it reminded Elijah who he is. Now, who he is and what he has been called to do. Um, why are you here? Why are you here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? When we lose focus of God, when we start focusing on our own strength and our own um, plans, our own expectations, we're making small plans for God. A.W. Tozer said that God is in the business of doing the impossible. It's too bad that we make plans only we can achieve. 
I just totally butchered that quote. I gotta stop doing this. Another parallel for this passage can be found in Isaiah chapter 40. Starting in verse 27, there's this beautiful dialogue here that um, questions those who question God. So starting in verse 27, it says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Now we see a parallel there between Elijah and this passage because God gave him the food so that he could run and not be weary. I mean, he, he ran for 40 days there over to the Mount of Horeb after God came in the whisper and Elijah recognized him in the whisper, then God asks him again, Elijah, what are you doing here? And Elijah gave the same answer he had given before, which means he clearly did not understand the meaning of God's question. I, I think God was just trying to point out, hey, you have a purpose. I've set something out for you. You know who I am, and what are you doing with it? After Elijah gives this answer, this same answer that he had given before, God gives him instructions and he tells him where to go and what he's supposed to be doing. Because how did Elijah know that it was God in the whisper and not in the other components? It was because Elijah knew God. He had walked with him and had many conversations with him. He knew who God was and so he could recognize that he was not in the noise. He was not in the catastrophe. He was in the still, small, consistent voice. We cannot recognize God's voice if we're not walking with him. If we don't know God, we cannot know what he wants for our lives, not specifically anyway, because we don't know God. We can't hear his voice when he calls to us. Now, if we know God, then we can focus on him and focus on his voice so that we know where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing. So... Today I have a few challenges for you. One is take time getting to know God. Know God so well that when you hear a still small whisper, you know whether it's him or not. So get to know God. Secondly, I want to encourage you. What are you doing where you are? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Are you doing something for God or are you just sitting there waiting for the waves to cease? Sitting there waiting for the wind to calm down, waiting for, um, maybe you're waiting for the end. I don't know what you're waiting for, but if you're waiting, I want you to stop and think, what are you waiting for? And what are you doing? What are you supposed to be doing? And where can you go from here? Stop, get to know God's voice. Listen carefully to his voice and then get doing what it is that he set before you to do. I want to hear what you think. Um, leave your comments here on YouTube or over on my website. I want to know what's going on in your head and what God is teaching you through all of this. Um, there's a lot more to discuss here and a lot more to explore. If you dive right into these chapters, again, I've got the homework up and ready for you so that you can um, use those questions to really dissect God's word and understand exactly what it is that that he has for you today. Um, I pray you are blessed and that uh, that we get to meet again soon. Thanks. Bye.